Wingspan on Valley Sports is presented by Coors Light, made to chill. Oh. Never thought you'd be sitting across from me, huh, uh -huh. doing an interview? I know. When did you, when was your last year? 2020. 2020? So I'm three years now we moved. Did you move right away or is this your like first year with the TV? This is my first year. I mean, Billy's doing a hell of a better job than I am with the interview right now. He's actually interviewing yeah, me. Yeah, it's cold. <laughs> it's cold. Loose in front of the goal, oh what a God. save! Wow. What a stop, Russo there again. Brody, the defenseman, made a play in front of the save by Howard. That's an all-star save. Here comes down and off, three seconds left, the play. Hey man, thanks so much for sitting down with me. We're making history today. This is my first time conducting an interview. So I'm really thrilled to, you know, to be able to sit down with you, I'll throw you some softball questions and uh, you know, we'll get into it. But I'm gonna hit you here with a hard one first. Why 35? I know why I wore it, but why did, I wanna know why you picked it. I, uh, I think it's, uh, I, was, I got drafted by St. Louis and I think my first number there was 40. Mm -hmm. But then uh, Carter Hodden, came in and he played before me there. So uh, then I, when, while he was there, then they gave me 35. And then it's, it's been 35 since that. So it just sort of fell in your lap, right? Yeah. Well, I was hoping you were gonna say 35 for uh, PAX. Oh yeah, <laughs> I know? mean, you always watch goalies for sure. Like yeah. what numbers they wear, like Fleury always like 29. And you know, like you kind of know what they wear, but like, for me, it's still like I, I can pretty much wear whatever they gave me, and I was lucky that Poli gave me the 35. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> um, so when did you first fall in love with hockey? I think right away. Like I was like two years, eight months old, and I like start skating and you know like ripping in the home in the hallway, and mm -hmm. then I would like play knee hockey, you, you know, like just like everything with the stick and a ball or a stick and a puck, whatever, and just always liked it. And, you know, even even I would say in the school too, like I always liked uh, when we went, went to play hockey or even like soccer or whatever, like always the sport was like my main thing and uh, hockey number one for sure. Correct me if I'm wrong, is hockey top dog in Finland or is it still soccer? Or tell me about this Finnish baseball. Oh yeah, Finnish baseball. I think we need to bring uh, Oli here. He uh, <laughs> he played and uh, actually did like, he really? Yeah, and I think uh, his dad was a pro player as well. So uh, we might need to ask Oli more. But uh, yeah, it's a little different than the U.S. baseball, and uh, I don't want to get too into it now. It's uh, it might take a long time to explain the rules and stuff. But well, that's good because I only got you for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's um, hockey. I think it's still a the biggest you know there like I mean soccer too now like especially Finland have done a good job mm -hmm. in the soccer and uh, went to the Euro Cup first time a couple years ago and you know like uh, it's growing as well and uh, it's good, good to see that uh, kids love to play sports and even if it's hockey or soccer or whatever basketball you know like I just like to see that. Now was saying that you did you start off as a player or did you go gravitate right away to being a goalie? Uh, well, at the hockey school, I was like player. Everyone, you know, is skating. And um, then I think the first team, I, we had like goalie set, like goalie gear set for everyone. Mm -hmm. And then I, I used it once and I liked to be a goalie. And I think my dad right away was like, hey, like you want a goalie, like own goalie gear? and. Find find a goalie gear and well, that's nice you know dad. like it, it was pretty pretty quick that I noticed that I wanted to be or like I wanted to be a goalie and you know like always liked it. Well, that's nice. I I mean my dad was just hoping it was going to be a phase for me. <laughs> <laughs> he was like hoping that I would grow out of it, but yeah. for me it was like always it was about the painted masks and like the the colorful equipment. So. And that's what I know, like growing up, that's what drew me to the position. But it wasn't until you actually got the stuff on, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's always, I still do. When I come to the rink, you always, you know, like touching the gear and 
it's always part of it, you know. I think it's uh, goalie, goalie stuff that players, they don't understand. Now, growing up, who did you admire? Like, who did you try? Like, I always tried to mimic my game after Mike Richter's, uh, the New York Rangers. Like, who, who was it for you that, uh, you know, you idolized growing up? Well, there was a couple guys that played in, back home in Finland. Uh, and then for sure, like these, you know, Patrick Krua, Hasek, you know, mm. and then like later, like Tuka Rask, Pekka Rinne, like Kiprusov, you know, like see like how they hold the glove or stuff like that, you yeah. know, like little things that you kind of build your own, like what you are. And uh, and then it's just, uh, like I said, watching every single goalie in NHL, so still watch like a lot of games and highlights, you know, like you try to take little things from some guys. So take me to now your, your draft day, getting picked by, you know, St. Louis. Like, was that, that had to be, you know, well, I knew for me it was just an absolute dream come true. I'm assuming it was, you know, the same for you. Yeah, for sure. Like, I think, think about it now, like, I, I don't know if I even understand it, what happened that time. You know, like, coming from Finland, like, didn't speak English that well mm -hmm. at the time and, like, just everything, how big it is here. Like even the, I got drafted in, it was in Philly, you know, like seeing an NHL hockey rink, you know, like it's just, um, you know, it's just like kind of like on this world, like, oh, like everything just happens. And, uh, but yeah, it was a cool experience. And um, my dad and stepmom was there and, uh, you know, it was nice to spend the time with them. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, Hopefully, like after the career, I can, you know, look at it again and be like, oh, wow, that was so cool. Take me back here. You were born in Helsinki, correct? Yeah. Is that where you grew up or did you grow up in like a, a suburb as well, like, well, like you have here in the States? No, it was kind of like, so Helsinki, it's, it's a, biggest city in uh, Finland, but like it's not like cities like here in Detroit, you know, like how it's like you need to drive like 30 minutes to get some point, you know, like places and uh, but it was kind of, uh, it's kind of east side uh, Helsinki and um, but then uh, my uh, parents uh, divorced when I was four, so I was kind of back and forth and uh, my dad was still an uh, equipment guy for our team, so I might have spent a little more time with him because it was easier to get the practice mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And uh, but uh, yeah, just you know, a uh, little bit all over actually in Helsinki then, and um, I enjoy going back there now. And uh, uh, you know, always every summer I try by the the school where I went to, and you know, just to like. It was a good, back down yeah, memory just lane, like good right? memories, yeah. you know, like when you're a kid, like you're just having fun and uh, it's just, uh, you know, I like to be in Helsinki and always want to, you know, like go there at least for a month in the summer or something. Tell us what they're putting in the water over there in Finland, because for the last 20 years, Finland has just been pumping out unbelievable goalies. <laughs> I mean, I, we all drink tap water, so it might be that. Uh, no, I think, uh, the, you know, um, that's, if you go even like 15 years ago, like the Kohli coaches, like they've been in the top level, you know, like then they went to even Russia to like teach goalies there. And uh, uh, I think it's the Kohli coaching for sure. And when you are young, like you, you just like, you always have that goalie ice, you know, like mm -hmm. we used to have once in a week, like one hour goalie ice, which is like, I think that was the biggest thing for me, like just to, you know, learn how to use your edge and all yeah. that little things. Like sometimes it was like funny stuff too. Like, you know, you're just uh, there with like five, six other goalies and like having a good time. And um, you see how they do stuff. And at the same time, you're trying to take something out of them. Yeah, I mean, people don't realize, you know, how important, you know, that time is for a goalie to work on it because it's such a specialized position. So that's, you know, really cool to to hear that Finland's doing that. Like, I know from experience here in the States, the goalies might get 20 to 30 minutes in a practice slot time. So, you know, maybe an hour over the course of three practices. So that's pretty special that they're going to do that. And it explains why you guys have been, you know, yeah. so good. And over... it starts like early years too. Like when you're, you know, like 10 years old, like, you know, you get the goalie eyes with older guys and 
you know, it's just cool to see that how the older guys, what they do, and then, you know, one day you are in their spot and mm. younger guys looking at you, and it's kind of like a snowball effect. Playing over in Europe, I've been there, played there, you play on a bigger ice surface. What were some adjustments that you faced when you first came over and you started playing, you know, in the North America style game? I think everything happens so quick here. It's, uh, you know, guys are just throwing pucks at the net and like, you know, rebounds and everything happens quick and, you know, you need to be on your toes all the time, even the puck is on the other end and mm -hmm. uh, just need to be ready. You, you gotta be like top of them the all game long. Yeah. Now this question's for basically the goalie union out there. You got some people that are very pro RVH and some guys that are like, oh, it's used way too much. Where do you think it's at with the game now? I, I think, I don't know. It's, uh, if you look like Vasi, uh, Vasi, yeah. so he's like, I feel like he's missing something on his hips because when he's on the pose, you know, like both legs. On oh, the, both legs are on the pose. It's ridiculous. So like it's, but like for some guys, it's just so hard for, you know, like you can't physically do it. So like you need to find a way to do it some other way. And, uh, and I think it's at the end of the day, it's wherever you feel comfortable. And uh, I, I think for me, it's to be on my feet a little more, not mm -hmm. go in the reverse, even when the puck is in the corner. And uh, it's just uh, comes to the reading the game and, uh, you know, make your own decisions. Yeah, and like saying that, like for all our little goalies out there that just watch and watch and watch the NHL guys and watch them do the uh, RVH, what, what are the markings that you use on the ice and tells you whether or not to go into the RVH or, you know, this is when I have to get out of it? Because they, I, I've, <laughs> I've got some kids, they love doing it and they just sit in it, right? Yeah, so. yeah, so yeah, that's the one thing too, like it's not a, you, when you go reverse, like it's not uh, that you're like just chilling there. Like you still, you can still be active. You know, like you use your uh, anchor leg, and you know, mm -hmm. like, and then what, what's coming next? Like, do I need to move another side? Like, is there a pass? You know, low to high, or just like how when whatever, whenever the shot comes, like you are in a spot that you put yourself in a good spot and uh, the best chance to save it. What a oh stop! Oh, two amazing wow. saves by Billy Hoso! Wingspan on Valley Sports he is presented by Coors Light, made to chill. Now, this question is primarily for me because I played with this guy. He got to coach you. What is it like um, playing for Steve Ott? Oh, I, <laughs> I, I love Steve. Uh, he was great for me. Uh, actually, um, he um, when I got to St. Louis, um, went, like actually the NHL, and I, I wasn't very good. Like after practice, you know, like staying mm -hmm. after and like taking rebound or whatever, like yep. breakaways, whatever. And uh, he kind of like got me like he teach me like hey like you're making you know you, if you stay there like the guys are starting to notice that and like they'll pluck a shot or two for you in the game and uh you know just like how hard you need to work to like earn to be in this league and you know just to play and um i you know he was like he played he was uh played hard and like oh, he's still like I feel I like I hated playing against him <laughs> as a coach he's still like you know so into it like that he has to fire and uh yeah he's a great guy great coach yeah he truly is I hated playing against him but then when he got here and he was my teammate man did I love him we were we were inseparable he didn't really teach me anything on the ice it was more away for the ice but we won't touch on that <laughs> certainly like the season that Billy had. We feel comfortable that he's an NHL goaltender. We feel comfortable that, that he'll make us a better team. Let's talk about last spring, draft night, and you get traded to Detroit. What was your initial reaction with that? I was pumped, for sure. <laughs> uh, it's actually funny because uh, there was the ESPN uh, 
documentary about uh, Colorado and Detroit, yeah. and I we watched that like night before. So that was Thursday night when we watched it, and then Friday was the draft day, and then it all happened. And you know, it's just a you're like wow, like or, original six team, you know, like historic team, like a lot of legend players here, and uh, you know, I was just so excited and. Uh, Summer went fast, and I was, uh, you know, when I came in, I was just, you know, the mindset was don't think too much, just come in and uh, have fun and try to help the team to win. What do you think is your best attribute out there on the ice with your style and how you play? I, I know what I think. I think it's for your size and how fast you are going from, you know, side to side, east-west movement, your, your RVHs. You know, normally very tight. I think it's a mix of a little bit of everything. Uh, reading the game, you know, like, and then it's the feet, you know, moving. Uh, and, and then still at the times, you know, like as a big guy, like you can sometimes kind of just block it, you know, mm -hmm. when it's closed, especially. And I, like I said, I think it's a mix of uh, a little bit of everything. And uh, still, I know that I can be much more better too. You're just scratching your NHL career here. What have you learned about yourself in your short little stint so far? I think it's just, uh, you know, uh, it's hard league. There is no easy wins. Um, you just need to compete every day and battle every practice and, you know, um, just, you know, live day by day. And it's, it's funny, like, when you lose a game and you're so, like, mad at yourself kind of and then you come next day to the rink and you know like you just somehow like you find the energy and the mindset to get better and same after wins like sometimes it's not easy to come next day to the rink and you know you, you have a nice win last night and but you still need to come to work and uh, put the you know compete and in the practice and challenge the guys. Wingspan on Valley Sports is presented by Coors Light, made to chill. Closing in on your first season with the Wings, what have you enjoyed most about playing here in Detroit? I think it's the, the fans, the atmosphere, you know, at the home games, even in the locker room, like, I feel like it's more, you know, like a big family. Um, mm -hmm. Just uh, feels home, like, feel comfortable here and, you know, like, it's just, everything feels easy. It just uh, helps you, you probably know too, like, when everything is easy, you know, like, yeah. it's just like, it's for your mind and, you know, it just uh, helps you to focus us for the hockey and uh, I, I love being here. The fans have been electric all year here at the, at the LCA and, you know, it, it, it feels like it, you guys are feeding off that as a team as well. Yeah, here, like, I feel like lately, especially, like, it's the building has been rocking for sure. And, uh, and we noticed that too, like, and then at the same time, we want to, you know, give the fans what they want and they want the win. So um, I know, like, we haven't made the playoffs for last, what, five, six years. And, you know, but we still truly believe that it's coming. And uh, uh, we just need to do everything to, uh, as a team to uh, get those wins and, uh, and then see what happens. No one knows the team better than the players themselves. You guys are, you know, going out there, you're in the trenches together every single day. What is something that you can tell the fans about this team right now? Uh, I think we are very hungry. You know, uh, it's, um, it's been a difficult season for sure, like uh, especially like the de trade deadline, yeah. like losing a couple of guys and a lot of emotion and... Uh, but we still, uh, we believe, um, and we just, uh, you know, we need to go day by day now and uh, game by game, and, uh, and then we'll see if it's enough. But um, we, are, we are still all in it, and uh, we just, 
as of now, like we all want to win too. Like it's the yeah. our main goal is this oh, yeah. year. And you know, once this season, you know, comes to a close, what's one thing you're looking forward to doing? Uh, spend summer here in Detroit. Spend summer here? Yeah. You're not going back to Finland? I'll, I'll go for a little bit, but I think most of the time we'll be here as well. Really? Yeah. I wasn't expecting that out of your mouth whatsoever. Yeah. No, that's exactly that. We like it here and, you know, it's, uh, awesome. I think it's going to be a good setup for training and stuff. But don't you have, like, sun all year, all year round? Like, yeah, all... but it's not that nice when no. it's, like, you know, like 80, uh, 80 Fahrenheit outside and no AC inside the building, so... <laughs> So it's, uh, I'd rather stay here at the AC and, you know, like, it's still a good weather here. Wait, you don't have AC in Finland? No, not most of the places. They don't. No? So, uh, I wouldn't have, ex even in Helsinki, I wouldn't have yeah, thought that. It's not a, you know, like, that's the one thing that people don't realize here. It's like, uh, when it gets hot, it's actually the buildings get hot and you try to keep your window open, but it's not actually, uh, it doesn't really help. Oh, what a, what a save. save.